A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H, then the I, Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Smile album, Wall of Eyes. This is the latest full-length LP from The Smile, a new-ish band out of the UK with musicians in it. Musicians you may have heard of, like uh, guitarist, keyboardist, composer Johnny Greenwood, as well as singer and songwriter Tom York, uh, both of whom are known for work they've done previously in, you know, a, a little band named Radiohead. You know, just a failed little music side project nobody's ever heard of. Which happens, you know, some bands and uh, musical groups uh, just don't make it. Sometimes you just have to reform, split off into something new in order to increase your chances of, you know, getting that big spotlight. Which is why I wish Tom and Johnny all the luck in the world. However, they are not just a duo, but a trio also featured featuring percussionist Tom Skinner. The real star of the show here, he has been putting in work for years in a myriad of groups and projects, uh, many of which have uh, jazz or jazz funk leanings, which made him kind of a curious choice for this new project with Johnny and Tom, uh, given that's not necessarily where Radiohead is coming from stylistically. But I can't deny the groovy and cerebral rhythms that he often lays in the background of the Smiles tracks. Uh, th there is some Something to it. It brings something different to the table, different than what you usually hear out of a Radiohead or Radiohead adjacent track, because while The Smile is a different band, I don't think Johnny and Tom have made too much of an effort uh, since they've split off into The Smile to, you know, sound unlike themselves to meticulously craft a sonic palette unique to this band because the smile mostly seems like a creative outlet for them to operate within with less overall pressure. The pressure of working within the same decades-long band dynamics, the pressure of releasing music with the Radiohead name and legacy, the pressure of whatever perceived parameters there are around a piece of music uh, that they release, what it should sound like, what it could sound like given that it would normally be a Radiohead song. Whatever the reasoning is behind starting The Smile, uh, there does seem to be a creative hunger and freedom uh, fueling the band at this point, especially considering their debut came out just a couple of years ago now. Meanwhile, Radiohead hasn't uh, had a two-year album gap since like the 2000s. Now the first Smile record, while I did enjoy it, it's far from a perfect album, but I don't think uh, being perfect was the point of that record. So there was clearly a looser set of expectations on that first Smile album, considering it had a range of styles and sounds that uh, couldn't help but be a little fragmented, especially given some of the tracks on this thing were some of Tom's most well-assembled and written in years. Meanwhile, there were others that were very linear and one-dimensional, uh, not quite as structured out. There were also cuts that were very spacious and uh, despondent, quite sad and depressive. Uh, then you had cuts that are honestly some of the most rockin' stuff uh, that's ever been attached to anybody in Radiohead, like you will never work in television again. So as a result of this, I went into Wall of Eyes uh, not really knowing what to expect. This record is of a slightly shorter length in terms of overall runtime and track list with just eight songs. And some of these tracks are actually going the distance lengthwise. Uh, many average out around five. We have a six minute one, we have an eight minute one. And the whole thing really lacks a a fiery shorty of any sort. I would say the closest example of a track that actually hits hard on this thing is Read the Room, which features these squawking guitars, fuzz bass, punchy snares. Whole thing sounds like a frightening psych rock acid trip, which masterfully slides into these magical storybook chords that have no business sounding as cohesive within the overall framework of the song, but they do. Uh, there's a killer ending to the track, too, with a lot of driving riffs. Similarly, the song Under Our Pillow closes up shop with these uh, kraut rock Esque drums and guitars too. However, I'm digressing too much. What I want to say is generally, if the smile has made any focused attempt uh, to embrace any sound on this album, it's that the tracks on this thing are a lot more spacious, uh, are a lot more open, much more dependent on vibes. We have a lot of linear, unorthodox progressions uh, for tracks on this album that do not pop uh, instead, they more patiently 
blossom over time into something powerful, emotionally impactful. You can kind of get lost in the instrumentation. And I'll be honest, with the last record, uh, the songs that were usually the most abstract, the most, you know, kind of going out into the weeds, those were the ones that really left me wanting more. As for the time they lasted, uh, there wasn't really a great payoff occasionally. However, I would not say that is the case uh, for Wall of Eyes, though. For sure, there are a couple of moments that I would say uh, border on being a bit one note, like the opener, which is kind of an acoustic meditation that feels uh, part bossa nova jam, part dystopian soundtrack piece with all of these echo-drenched sounds gurgling up in the background, serving almost like a percussive effect. Then there's also I Quit, which I would actually say is a pretty dang enchanting, given Johnny Greenwood's string arrangements and Tom Skinner's uh, very subtle but persistent beats. But even if these tracks I was kind of hoping for a little bit more in terms of, you know, change or uh, contrast across their runtime, they're still super enjoyable. And I think that's the result of the band doing a much better job of keeping the journey these songs are on interesting with lots of embellishments and details and just generally great production. Because pretty much every track on this thing successfully strikes a balance uh, between sounding vibey but also eerie, whether the band is keeping things simple on the hauntingly gorgeous piano ballad on the outro, or hitting us with a track like Teleharmonic, which is extremely subtle throughout, but progressively becomes more and more enveloping between all the effects and uh, keyboard swells on the track. Also hissing noise, groovy bass lines, Tom's voice uh, kind of soaking in all the reverb too. There's also Bending Hectic, which I think has a lot of interesting and unique musical qualities to it. These uh, swirling guitar arpeggios, the way the instrumentation feels like it's getting tight, but then also loosening up as well, going back and forth between that. The guitar part uh, sounding uh, progressively detuned, but then in tune. There's a lot of fluidity to this track uh, for those reasons and more, but interestingly enough, the song actually arrives to the biggest and most gratifying crescendo on the entire album too. Shout out also to Friend of a Friend, which is this immense piano tune. In part, it feels like a solemn bar meditation with many strange groove and chord changes. And as Tom York's vocals get more passionate and uh, those string arrangements start really piling up, uh, it's giving almost like Sergeant Pepper's era Beatles. Not to mention the moments where the song kind of inflates with all of these interesting delay and noise effects. It's kind of peak rainbows and king of limbs. But yeah, even if there's not as many tracks on this record to go over in comparison with the first Smile album, I think the trio very clearly bested the debut here. It's got a more consistent sound and crop of songs. There are no real major duds across the track list. We have more detailed, more gorgeous, and ambitious production, and I love that the group was able to uh, take some of the shortcomings of the last album, really focus on those, make that the bread and butter of this record, and improve on it. Because I think they could have easily, like, you know, hit us with a smash album if they just did one rockin' song after another. But instead, Johnny, Tom, and Tom uh, kept things in a more difficult-to-define space, and somehow just made a great artful and very engaging album in that process. I am feeling a, a strong eight on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, music, the smile, uh, forever.